Hi everyone. Again, welcome to the, the LPS class. Um, we are going to continue um, our lecture um, on tickle. Um, if you remember, like I mean, in the last lecture, we talked about the TK predominantly. We completed the TK. We gave some more um, um, advanced tickle uh, processes, basically as to how one can um, um, load in tickle as a dot SOs and um, call tickle functions from anywhere, things like that that we talked about. Um, today we are going to take another step uh, in that direction, uh, but mainly we are going to talk about uh, tickle in uh, synopsis tools. Uh, these are the tools that you use for your labs and also like I mean in real world you will be using a lot. And uh, synopsis has actually modified tickle a little bit for the better. So we will be learning about um, how to use uh, tickle in synopsis tools and what kind of support that they provide. Because um, tickle is not only their language, but uh, it's language of choice. But actually, it has a lot of um, good uh, things basically. So today we will be talking mostly about the tickle in synopsis tools, uh, which is mostly an extension of the existing people so I will be talking about a lot of the concepts that we already covered just to reinforce so that uh, you, you also know what uh, it is. Um, so number one thing um, as with any other tickle um, we have a number of variables the variable names are mostly like if they are the scalar names basically it can uh, uh, you can simply say uh, any name it can become a variable name um, and you can assign a value to that variable by using the set um, command so simply like set a1 will be same as a equal to 1 or a will have a value of 1 um, and then this uh, um, Variables. This is values can be either integer, integer, or floating. And then we'll soon see, like I mean, other other uh, variable uh, extensions. Uh, these are some of the things that we already saw, like I mean, in uh, the very first lecture of tickle. Um, and then one of the key concepts that we also talked about was the variable substitution. That's also valid. So once you have this, and then now you can select say set b dollar a, so that b will also be equal to one. So those are the things basically that uh, you can do, and other ones like the various other um, functions and things like that are also like supported, like incremental or additions and. Uh, whether the info exist kind of things basically info exist is uh, essentially like that is one thing um, which returns if the variable is true info exists it returns a one if the variable exists and if it is a it does not exist uh, does not exist it returns a zero and then you can also have info wars. And here you can give like some while path, say x star, and this returns all the um, variables beginning with x. And then the precision rules are very similar to the, the regular tickle rules that means that um, when you start with an integer um, if, and then as you go to further operations maybe like 2 this result stays as an integer and then you again divide by 2.0 now this becomes a float so answer will be 1.0. So, um, and then if you use the float as the first one the result will be a float so those are those kind of things basically um, need to be aware of so 
then one thing that uh, synopsis provides is also set of predefined variables um, one example is the env so env is um, a variable that contains all the environmental variables so we can use commands like array names env this command will print out the list um, it contains elements, uh, element names that correspond to the name of the environment variables. And then to show like a particular environment variable within that, we can also use an echo command. The echo dollvnv home will print out whatever the value that is set as home. And uh, Synopsis also provides a predefined command called get env. So the get env command is very simple. This is get env and then the, the variable name, and then it pro, it uh, dumps that particular variable. So the home has whatever it is that gets dumped out. So these are this is the nifty command that uh, you can use. Um, and now let's go into script basically. Uh, what is the script? The script is nothing but it's a, a tickle. So it has a tickle commands and synopsis commands. So these are all like grouped together, and. Um, so you can run like some synopsis command to get some data and then process it through using your regular tickle commands and then also like apply that back into like the synopsis tool using the synopsis command so that becomes part of a script and along with the commands uh, scripts essentially like I mean you know that already the hash if you use it that's for comments and this can come uh, anywhere in the line and the only thing is after the hash everything in that line will be treated as a comment the only exception is if you are extending the comment using the back the backslash arrow and you use the backslash arrow even the next line whatever it is that's treated as a comment As you know, this is the continuation character, and basically, like, uh, it will be this, and any kind of preceding character will be replaced with nothing. So, this has a new line next to it that will be preceded, that will be replaced with just a blank, and that's why this line will be then continuous with the next one. And how do we run a script? We use the command called source. So, for example, source. My dot tickle. My dot tickle can be a script that contains all these tickle commands and the synopsis commands, and we simply do a source to run the script. So once you do the source, um, you can redirect using greater than symbol. So this is all the standard ones that we already saw about saw the, these things. Um, um, Now let's go to the next one, which is um, the data types. Um, as we have seen in the regular, even Synopsis also supports the three basic types of uh, data, which are strings, array, and list. The string is nothing but a sequence of characters.
and a string can be within quotes basically you can embed strings within quotes or you can have like just generic uh, strings of uh, just uh, some letters the strings are usually uh, operated on by a string uh, command so a string command takes um, many arguments essentially arcs so for example string and then we can say compare here we give the first string and then the second string so it compares these two and if they are same um, um, it, it generates a one otherwise it generates a zero and then string to upper and then string name this will convert the string from lower case to upper case. So similarly there are many operations that are possible um, the main ones are format regex reg sub which is essentially a, it uses a regular expression to do a substitution. Also, you can do scan, like a string scan, or uh, whatever. And then uh, string string provides a set of string manipulation functions. And then string subst s u b s t, which is um, for substitutions. So this will be a pure substitution. A reg sub will be based on a regular expression. It can do a substitution. So these are the commands. That uh, synopsis will support. Um, let's do link uh, list. The list is nothing but an ordered group of elements. So it is usually we enclose it in the square bracket. And we can also use a list command to create a list. So list and then set of elements will be turned into a list and you know like I mean the command substitution uh, uh, the square bracket command substitution and then I also um, think that you remember in tickle there are grouping basically there is a loose grouping all the with uh, the braces and then uh, more strict grouping with the um, quotes um, actually it may be like rules but the main difference is that here when you have like a variable dollar x it does the variable substitution whereas here it does not do any substitution they are preserved as is. so this is more strict and this is more loose okay um, so Based on that, I mean, you can actually group the list elements. So, if you group it here, anything under the in, inside the brace is treated as one object in the list, and then the others will be separated out. Um, also, a list has a, a index, in the which is L index. You can do L index and then give a number and then access any of the elements, and it usually it starts with zero. And then it goes to end. So L index end will give the last element. L index zero will give the first element. So these things they don't change. Other list operations are concat, join, L append, uh, L index that I mentioned, L insert. Then length or L length, L range. L range is also like it's a very useful operator. Um, it's basically it extracts the uh, elements in a list within a given range. L replace, L search, L sort, and uh, split. We we went in much more details in covered, 
I think like pretty much you can use that way. So the tickle interpreter within the um, synopsis tool can work with all these uh, different setups. So now we come to the arrays um, that is this element here. So array is uh, in tickle it uses the associative array we know that um, basically the index does not matter it can be a real number it can be an integer it can be a string whichever one that we can use. So typically an array name will be a, a, um, it is an array name followed by element name. And usually the arrays will have a two-dimensional lookup table. Basically, like one is the index, and then another one is the value. So it is like a key-value pair. Almost think of it that way. Now, um, Tickle also supports the EXPR, so you can use the EXPR as well for evaluating any expression. So the array commands are typically like array, and then Similar to the the list commands, and I have put a question mark here. There's a fourth data type, which is what is uh, what makes uh, Synopsis tools very special. Uh, we will talk about that towards the end of uh, this lecture. Uh, this is called collection. So collection is a data type in Synopsis tools. You can actually use this. And it's a very very useful uh, data type. It's kind of a list, but it is even more advanced than a list. We will look at it as to how to use it and how actually it's being used today. So operators essentially, like I mean, this is this mainly goes back to that what I was mentioning regarding the expressions. Expressions are given by EXPR and then um, you can have like um, one argument which is in enclosed in the um, in the braces so inside that you can have like a slash b times c plus d whatever you want so maybe this is wrong like tall or something so you have the tall substitution as well so the operators essentially like I mean that you can use within the EXPR command are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, um, less than, greater than. This is basically a shift operator where it shifts the value to the um, left by so many bits. So if you say like a b a, it shifts b. Uh, the number of bits as to a. So if a is two, it shifts left by two. And this is a shift right operator. And this is the equal to as a logical operation, and not equal to as a logical operation. These are also so these are relational operations rather, um, but uh, the these are bitwise um, and this is bitwise XR, bitwise R, and this is a conditional operator where if um, if A is non zero, then take B, otherwise take C so if you say like set X A question mark B C if A is 1 then X is B if A is 0 then X is C and 
okay um, so the all the other operators basically you can also use the logical operations um, instead of bitwise and the logical operations typically used inside some control flow structure so let's see like what are the control flow structures in uh, the synopsis uh, tickle so number one is the the if else if else here you don't have to have these both these things it can just be if so if as two arguments one is the expression and then the second argument is the script and you can see that I am putting in braces so that uh, they can work uh, they are grouped as one and two in an else if case we specify the expression say expression one and then you execute script one else if and then we can give expression two and then script two and then finally else and then just script three. So you can see that actually like it we can flow nicely uh, with all the all the other clauses here. So when the if command evaluates the expression, if it is um, if the expression result is uh, not a zero, then the script is executed. If it is zero, then it just goes to the next one. And this else if can continue on and on and on. Now the while command. So, quick question: How many arguments do you think it takes? So, the while command has two arguments, uh, just similar to the just the bare bone if command. It's a while, and then condition or an expression, and then one. Body is just a script which executes. So these are the two arguments for why. How about for? For is something that we studied also. How many arguments do you think a for has? For is also another way of looping structure. So if you look at for. For has actually three arguments, actually four arguments. So the first argument is the initial expression. And then the second one is the termination, the third one is a pre init expression. So, what does this do? We will we'll talk about that, and then finally the body or the script itself. So the reinit expression is basically like from initial to the termination how to go about uh, doing that. So in a simple case like you can say like um, uh, initial can be set x 0 and then the termination condition can be dollar x less than or equal to 10 and then where the reinit expression will be um, increment x increment dollar yeah x. And then you can have the bond. So that that particular loop will be repeated ten times. Now comes for each. How many arguments do you think for each takes? So this one, one, two, three, four. For command takes four. This takes three. How many do you think for each takes? Actually, um, for each takes also for each takes actually three arguments. Actually, like this is two arguments. While well, takes two arguments, uh, for takes four, and for each takes three. So, what are the three arguments that it takes? So, it takes um, a variable uh, 
then the input list and then the body. So it picks up one variable at a time from the list and then runs the body for each one of them. Now there are two other uh, actually three um, other controls three other uh, control flow uh, commands which can actually cause changes in the way the flow is being uh, run. So one such command is break the break command will cause the innermost loop to terminate as soon as it hits the break and these can be used to actually change um, the flow for 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 each and y. Now the next one is the continue command. The continue command actually causes the innermost for innermost loop to stop, but it continues from where it left off. It won't terminate the whole thing. So it causes the current iterations of the innermost loop to start to terminate, but the next iteration will still continue. So continue is kind of it's more safer kind of a command compared to break. But you you may have situations where you use one you can only use one or the other. Uh, they are not interchangeable, and sometimes like the break won't fit in where uh, the um, continue fits in, and vice versa. Now the last one is the switch command. Um, the switch command. How many arguments does it take? Actually, believe it or not, it takes only two arguments. So a switch as a variable and a whole bunch of value. And then script. This entire thing is actually enclosed within one place. So you can almost say that basically, for given variable, if it is of one pattern, then do one script. If it is of a different pattern, then do a second script. Things like that, and it progresses. Uh, I mean, until you have no more patterns and scripts. The switch command also has uh, three options uh, that we didn't talk about. Um, it can be exact, exact match, or a globe match. GLOB. This is not to be confused with the glob operator. This is um, globe. Glob match is essentially it's a kind of a loose match, and then finally uh, a regex, basically. So these are three different options that you can provide for the switch command. Now let's talk about the basic file commands. So before we talk about these additional commands, basically we have CD and PWD. I think you guys know that CD stands for the change directory and then PWD is the present working directory those are pretty much the same and you can use that um, inside uh, synopsis uh, pickle command interpreter. And now let us look at the file commands um, and there are two of them basically like meaning like the, we can use two different types of options here in the file or a glob and glob you know that basically matches the regular expressions in this context. So the file commands are directory name to um, get the directory part of the file name and then you can also do file exists. And then a given a file name which uh, returns one if the name exists or zero if it doesn't exist. 
file extension is uh, gives the extension part of the, the file for example foo.txt it returns the text and then uh, is directory is a command uh, that returns one if the file name specified is a directory and uh, zero otherwise and is file also works the same way if it, it returns one if the name next to it is uh, is actually a file that exists otherwise it returns a zero these are all like file testing commands then readable is another one which is uh, returns if the permissions are set such that the file can be read, uh, readable file is readable and then the root name is another one which is uh, gives the root part of the uh, the file name size gives the size of uh, file name in bytes and then file scale file name will return the file name from part of the from the path string and then you also have like writable um, which is basically returns of one is writable or zero otherwise now the globe is actually like I put it towards the end basically the globe uh, matching is uh, something that we talked about um, in this context it actually returns the files it is a globe command uh, it is mainly for pattern matching and reporting files and globe you can say like uh, star dot very log and then star dot text this will return a collection of uh, very log and text files okay so so far so good um, Let's continue on. So, file access commands essentially, it is um, how can you open a file and access. Actually, the first command is file open command or just called open. Um, here, you can say like uh, what is the file and then what is the access mode. The access mode can be R, which is just uh, read only. R plus it is used for reading and writing and the W it is um, open only for writing W plus is open for reading and writing uh, and if, it, if the file exists um, it truncates it otherwise it will create that file then A is um, open the file for writing only and then the new data is appended to the file so the existing data is kept and then the new data is just getting appended to the file here the only uh, requirement is that the file name should exist it won't create that particular file and a plus is the same thing only for now you, you can use it for reading and writing and here if the file does not exist it uh, um, creates the file and then the new data is also like appended to the file similar to the previous command and to close um, a file we just uh, specify the close command the close followed by a file ID dollar file ID will close that particular file. Then we also have another um, command called flush command. Uh, literally, it means flushing. So, but the way that it is the flushing happens is whatever stored in the buffer gets written into that file at this point. Usually, when it exits, that's when it, it gets written out. In this case, uh, when you issue the flush command, at that point, it gets uh, written out into the main file. So no buffer is being kept. Uh, 
Now we have other two commands also to get information from the file or put something into the file. These are just uh, the bomb gets and puts. So the gets command essentially with, um, given the file ID and the variable it reads line by line into that. The put command essentially like whatever you find the line gets uh, put into the, the file. And uh, also there are two other uh, commands for non sequential file access meaning you can go directly to middle of the file and then start reading from that and those commands are seek and tell. The tell command essentially uh, it is used to obtain the current position of the pointer in the, in the file. Whereas a C command will just give an offset, it goes to that particular location to see what is there. Now we come to much more interesting stuff. Which is procedure. So as we saw, actually, we can define procedures, um, and then we, then we can run these procedures instead of uh, the native commands. And then the main um, command that creates a table procedure is the proc. So and then proc has uh, three more arguments. It is the name, name of the proc, arguments and then the body, so we saw like I mean a lot of these uh, uh, things about uh, procedures in the previous lecture. And we also um, talked about the variable scope in, in the context of the tickle, in the overall tickle. And this is essentially uh, the variable scope um, determines like uh, how to access the variable. So if you want to preserve the scope from a global variable to into the procedure, we use the keyword global, so that that particular variable is visible inside the um, environment or inside the procedure. Now, if you want to pass a procedure, pass a variable back to the the calling process, and uh, without actually passing it as a result string, we can do that using a for, and we can also do up script to uh, upload uh, the script itself. These are some of the commands that we saw already. And we can also specify defaults for the arguments just right next to it as a single element essentially and then uh, tools will take it. Now coming to the variable number of arguments this is specified as ARGS um, in the procedure so if one of the um, one of the arguments is this called ARGS then uh, tickle treats this as a variable number of arguments so it, it, will, it will keep reading that uh, um, dollar args until it is uh, fully exhausted. <laughs> And arrays in procedures, you can use arrays inside procedures. Um, basically, again, the scope needs to be determined, and then you can assign a scope, and then um, it's uh, it's quite pervasive at that time. And arrays can also be added in procedures. Now 
extension this procedure extension essentially. So, uh, Synopsys actually supports some built in features that can actually enhance the whole Kegel script writing it is no longer field second script, but it is a full blown program. So, two of such commands are defined proc attributes proc name and then uh, optionally an info text or the second one is parse proc arguments which has a dash arguments key with the argument list and then there is a result array which generates the result for this. So, the advantages of using these scripts the define script and the, the parse script is that when somebody requests a help uh, on this command it automatically produces a um, help essentially. So, the define proc command essentially takes uh, as I said proc name it can have in some info information uh, textual information uh, with uh, dash info there are other things which are not very relevant uh, which is uh, the command group hide body hidden permanent and do not abbreviate or abbreviate. So, I have not put the, the those uh, additional options. Um, Now the next one is the um, parse proc arguments. The parse proc arguments has a arg list as one of the arguments, and then a result array. So the result array will contain the the parsed arguments, essentially. So um, that's stored in the result array. And then the arg list is essentially a list of arguments that needs to be passed to the procedure. The reason why you be use some of these two commands are mainly so that it makes the procedure more readable and also it gives a consistent messaging around that proc. The defined proc commands proc commands also goes with the defined proc attributes command that actually gives more information about the um, all the attributes for the arguments. The parse proc arguments command essentially um, that if you do not have this the the particular script will not respond to the dash help. You can make it work by using a help procedure name and then minus verbose, but in if you want to get the procedure added you need to define the part uh, parse the proc arguments. Then once we define how do we display um, the procedures uh, for that we have several commands um, we can have info args. Info body so these are some of the uh, the commands that we can use uh, in a procedure.
So now we come to the collection which is um, one other data structure which is unique to synopsis. The collections are set of similar type of objects you can have a collection of actually multiple type also um, say with attributes say like nets into a collection um, all the cells into a collection and then you can have a single collection which can be both nets and cells but they are all grouped separately. So if you have a name called X in the nets and corresponding X in the name cells they both are separate first of all inside the array itself and then we can separately destroy one of them if the other one needs to be more prominent. So if you remove any objects it calls for like cell so if you remove X it can be the cell or net and it, if it removes it from the cells the X the net X is still retained inside the collection. So other important thing to note about collections is collections are memory less so it is created when at least one element gets added and it is destroyed automatically when the last element is removed so by itself it does not have any kind of bearing on what we do. And for creating collections there are two commands one is get any get star is a typical command for creating collections and then all underscore star is also another command. So if you want to display objects in a collection we use a query objects command and for selecting objects from a collection again a filter expression is one attributes so to select an object from a collection you can use a filter option or filter collection command so this one is like with filter and then whole bunch of attributes um, Now how do we add and remove objects from a collection you already saw like how to add the first element using the get uh, or actually the set commands um, but for adding and removing objects from a collection we have to use these two commands either add to collection or remove from collection. So these are preset commands basically which will help uh, um, add new objects into the collection or remove the existing ones. And as I said, basically, like when the last element is removed, uh, this array ceases to exist, and this collection ceases to exist, and basically, it's completely destroyed. So I mentioned earlier that the collections are uh, very versatile, and it is probably like the best thing happened here. So. To compare two collections, we use uh, the compare collections, and then if you want to iterate over a collection, we use for each in collection. You see, basically, the common theme is the collection of collections uh, becoming more and more. And to copy collection, basically, we just use the copy command uh, or copy underscore collection command. For each collection also has just two arguments 
um, and then for to copy the collection use the copy collection command and the extracting um, objects it should be is using the um, query objects command. So I think like I mean this pretty much is the overview of how we can use um, Tickle in uh, Synopsis tool I hope this is useful um, we will probably like go through some examples in the next uh, lecture ok thank you bye bye. Hey Sandeep. Hey Sandeep.